Hey, God bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video. I know that God is going to speak to your heart. Today, we're going to talk about the time Jesus debated Satan. And guess for what? For your soul. So make sure you watch this whole video all the way to the end so that you can see no matter what Satan says about you, mm. you are saved because of what Jesus did on the cross. Let's go. So before we start this video, I want to read to you the definition of debate. Look what the definition of debate is. A formal discussion on a particular topic in a public meeting or legislative assembly in which opposing arguments are put forward. So I want you to see something. There's two different thought patterns in a debate. There's the person giving his opinion and then there's another person giving their opinion. And I want to tell you, Satan has a lot to say about you and me, but guess who also has a lot to say about us? Jesus. So let's jump into this conversation and we want to talk a little bit about justification. You have to understand the Bible says that we're saved by what it grace and the Bible says that it's a what it's a free gift of God, not earned by works so that no one can boast in the presence of God. And we want to read you something. Look what the Bible says in Zechariah chapter three, verse one through 10. And let me explain a little bit what's going on so that y'all can understand a little better. In the book of Zechariah chapter three, one through 10, the exiles have just returned back to Jerusalem. Their nation has been destroyed because they have been disobedient towards God. God allowed them to be taken captive and the temple was destroyed. Now, the temple is a symbol of where the people can come and worship the Lord. And the temple is kind of like a lighthouse. It's where people come, worship the Lord. The high priest gives the orders. The high priest gives the commandments. And however the high priest is and however the people who work in the temple are, that's how the nation is. So the temple is super important because it sets the spiritual tone. But you have to imagine when the people were coming back to the nation, the temple was destroyed. And if the temple's destroyed, that's a symbol of their spiritual lives being destroyed. So right here in the book of Zechariah, you have the high priest Joshua and they're rebuilding the temple, but the devil wastes no time to try to come and put a hindrance in the life of Joshua. And talk a little bit about it before I read this story in the book of Zechariah. Talk a little bit about why the devil wants to condemn God's children so much. Why, why does the devil make it such a big deal to try to condemn people? So the reason that the enemy makes it his sole purpose to try to condemn us and stop us from fulfilling God's will and God's plan in our life is because of the love of God that God has for us. The enemy hates that God loves us. The enemy hates that God favors us. See, the Bible says that God has put a precious gift inside of us we're like jars of clay, but he's put a very valuable thing inside of us. That's us now in the new covenant. That is his Holy Spirit. Now the devil's going to do everything in his power that he can to stop that message from going forward. He doesn't want God's people to be set free. What does the Bible say? Know the truth and the truth will set you free. If the devil can accuse you to shut your mouth, you know, I heard this saying one time, they said, if you don't want anyone to talk about you, if you don't want to receive any criticism, don't say anything. Don't do anything and don't be anything. And people won't talk about you. But the moment you start to move forward and do something for God, the enemy's gonna rise up because he wants to intimidate you to shut your mouth because you have a powerful truth in you that God has put in you that is a message of salvation for your family, for your friends, for your loved ones, and even for people you don't even know, God will use you to share his powerful message of salvation. That's why the enemy wants to condemn you and guilt you to shut your mouth. So that's a good that's a good spot where to pick up on. The devil wants to condemn you because you have a powerful truth. You have a powerful truth. And that powerful truth is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's perfect that my brother ministered that because Joshua, the high priest, the way he sets the tone, that's the way the spiritual tone of the nation is going to be. So look, Joshua's the high priest. He sets the spiritual tone. So the devil goes straight at him. And look how the devil tries to condemn Joshua, the high priest. Look what the Bible says, Zechariah 3, verse 1 through 10. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan. Now the word Satan in the Hebrew means the accuser, the adversary. So the devil's your adversary, the devil's your accuser. This is Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan, remember the accuser, standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, now pay attention, because if you just read this, you'll miss it. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? Man. Now, 
He's not talking in third person. The Lord rebuke you. Listen to this. The Bible says, and the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Now look at this. When Jesus was doing his ministry, the Bible says that one day Jesus asked the Pharisees, and who is the Christ? And they said, well, he's the son of David. And David in the book of Psalms, he prophesied. And look what Jesus tells the Pharisees. And they were all, they were all shocked. He said, how can he be the son of David if David in the spirit said, and the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. Right. And the Bible says that the, the Pharisees were shocked. They had never seen that revelation. So even in the Old Testament, in David's time, David said, and the Lord said to my Lord, who's he talking about? Jesus and God. Amen. So right here when the Bible is saying, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, the Bible says, and the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Do you know who this angel of the Lord is? It's Jesus Christ. Jesus has been saving people by grace since the Old Testament. And look what the Bible keeps saying. Now the Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Is this not a man plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was standing before the angel, clothed with filthy garments. So look at this. The garments are a symbol of Joshua's lifestyle. Joshua, yeah, yeah. Joshua in the eyes of the devil and in the eyes of God is filthy. Let me tell you something. The devil's always going to have something in your life to condemn you with. He's always going to have some type of failure to condemn you with or some type of weakness or some type of temptation to try to bring him to your face and make you feel guilty. Joshua was dressed filthy. Joshua had filthy rags on him. But let me tell you something. The Bible says that all our righteous deeds in the presence of God are like what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. But that's why you and me don't depend on our own deeds. We depend on what Jesus did for us on the cross. Now let's keep reading. Pay attention. And after we reread this, me and my brother are going to continue to have this conversation. But look what the Bible says. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, remove the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure vestments, meaning pure clothes. And I said, and let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord was standing by. So now that we're finished reading that story, Ed, what did you see in that story when Joshua, the high priest, remember, he wasn't some regular person. He was the high priest. He was the pastor of all the pastors. And the Bible says he had filthy garments. And the Bible says that he had a dirty turban. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord said to those who were standing by, take those dirty clothes off, put clean clothes on them. Take that dirty turban off, put a clean turban on his head. So what I take from these Bible verses here is we see that Joshua being a high priest in the sight of God, he still had filthy garments, just like it says in Isaiah, that our most righteous deeds are still like filthy garments. Or like the Bible says about Elijah, Elijah was a man with like passions, like me and you, but he prayed fervently and that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain for three years. And then he prayed again and that it did rain. What that shows me there was that Elijah didn't trust in his own works, but when he prayed fervently, he was trusting in God. He was trusting in God's faithfulness, but not in his own faithfulness, but the Lord's and the Lord was still with them and the Lord still showed his mercy on him. Exactly. So Elijah was a man with the same passions as any other man. But the reason God heard him was because Elijah did not depend on his own strength or his own pious or his own holiness. He depended on the power of God. Now, this story that we just read in the book of Zechariah is the same type of story. Now, this is for anybody, anyone. If you stand in front of the devil in your own holiness, like in your own righteousness, you're done. Anybody who stands in front of the devil, there's done because all people have fallen astray. Amen. All people fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says no one seeks after the Lord, but each have gone astray like sheep to their own way. So Joshua, when he was standing next to the devil in his own authority, he was filthy. He was dirty. He was condemned. The Bible says he was feeling oppressed. But look at this. Who was the one that justified him? The angel, the angel of the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Who was that angel? Jesus Christ. That was the Old Testament representation foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Joshua, in his own holiness, under his own strength, was standing condemned next to the devil. But who was the one that justified him? Jesus justified him. And look what he said. Is this not a man plucked from the fire? Was he not a brand plucked from the fire? Did not God choose this man? Do you know what the angel of the Lord was telling Satan? We know who he is. We already know all his flaws. We already know all his errors. Man. We already know all his shortcomings. We already know all his temptations. Every little single spot that you're talking about, every single little stain that you're talking about, we already know it. And we chose him. 
He was in the fire, but we plucked him out. I want to tell you something. Everybody stands condemned in front of the devil in their own strength. Mm -hmm. But remember, you're not saved because of you. I'm not saved because of me. My brother's not saved because of him. We're saved because of Jesus Christ. Amen. And God found us the way he found us, and he saved us. And guess what? The same way he cleaned Joshua up, and the same way he put a new turban on his head, what does that new turban represent? Represents a new thought life. See, right now, some of you might struggle with your thought life, but I want to tell you, keep walking in the ways of the Lord, and your mind will begin to be renewed. The Bible mm -hmm. says this, and do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and the renewing of your mind through what? The Word of God. Through the Word of God. Amen. So how do you renew your mind? Through God's Word. What put that new turban on Joshua? The word of God. Amen. He said, let there be a new turban on his head. Also, he was dirty. And who justified him? Jesus Christ did. Right. He said, take that dirty robe off of him and put a new robe on him. I want to tell you something. Everybody who's watching this video, the thought life that you have right now, Jesus is renewing it every single day. That clothes, that clothes represents your life. Your life is being renewed every single day. The Bible says that we no longer live, but Christ lives in amen, us. Amen. So look. The devil was the accuser. The devil was accusing Joshua because if Joshua is standing as the high priest, then he's going to move the momentum forward in the nation of Israel and the people are going to begin to have a spiritual revival. So what was Satan trying to do? He was trying to stop Joshua using condemnation and that's still his favorite tool to this day. So remember, Satan is the accuser. He's the adversary, but we're not standing in our own strength. That's right. Jesus Christ, by what he did for us on the cross, we are righteous, we are clean. You know, I want to add to something. I love what you said a few minutes ago about God already, what, what he was telling Satan, man, we already know what, what Joshua has. We already know what he did. We already know what he's about. It reminds me of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. God says to Isaiah and he says to his people, he says, come, let us reason together. Literally, God says, hey, come, I want, let's talk about this. Let us reason together. And he says this, I know that you have sin. Come, let us reason together. I know that you have sin. And if your sin be as scarlet, I can make it white as snow. If it's red as crimson, I can make it white as wool. If you're willing and obedient, I will bless you and you will eat the best of the land. But it says this, but if you refuse and you rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. I'm so glad that that Bible verse doesn't say that if you are able and obedient, we're not able to be sinless. We're not able to fulfill God's word 100% every single day. But it says, if you are willing. There's a mm -hmm. difference between being able and being willing. Mm -hmm. I give this short little example. Let's say that someone invites me out for a jog, for a five-mile jog. Mm -hmm. Am I able? I'm not able to jog five miles without stopping. So if I wasn't able, I would say, nah, I'm not able to do that. But if I am willing, if someone invites me out, let's go for that jog. And I say, you know what? I'm willing. Let's go. Even though I can't finish it without stopping, I'm willing. And I know that the person that took me and invited me is going to be with me still every step of the way. That's how God is. Yep. He says, as long as you are willing to fulfill my word, yep. as long as you're willing to hold on to my word and obey, it says willing and obedient. I'll bless you and you'll eat the best of the land. But it's beautiful because God already says, I know your sin. Yep. I know you have sin. And he says, I can make it all go away. Amen. It's God's love for us. That's right. So the Bible tells us this. If any of you have sinned, the Bible says confess it to God and Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all iniquity, of all unrighteousness. First John so 1 John 1.9. The devil, he's the accuser. The devil, he's the one that's going to stand before us and try to condemn us, try to accuse us, try to point out all the spots and the wrinkles and the filthy rags. But remember, Jesus Christ is the one who is justifying you every single day. Amen. Jesus Christ is the one who is cleansing you every single day. The Bible says in the good work that he has started in us, he is faithful to complete it. And I want to read you something. So the devil, he, he's like a broken record. He's always trying to condemn, 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 accuse, 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 all of God's children. But look at the end of him. Look what the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. That's the devil. He's compared as a dragon. Mm -hmm. But he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down. That ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, who was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying this. Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, Amen. who accuses them day and night before our God. 
So the Bible says this, Satan's only job is to accuse the brothers of Jesus. Why does it say brothers of Jesus? Because when you and I receive Jesus Christ, we become children of God. Amen. So look at this. The Bible says his only job is to accuse God's children, not God's going to be soon children, not God's soon to be called children, not people who are trying to be saved. No, the only job he has is to accuse the children of God. You are a child of God. You Amen. receive Jesus Christ. You are a child of God. And Jesus Christ is the one who justifies you. Jesus Christ is the one who cleanses you. And because of what he did on the cross, you're saved. You want to say Amen. anything else? Yeah, I would love to add this. The Bible teaches us and it shows us that we have a mediator to God that is Jesus Christ. Jesus is fighting for you every day. The Bible says that he's praying for us and he's interceding for us on our behalf to the Father. You're loved. God loves you and Jesus is fighting for you to this day in the spirit. I just want to leave you guys with that. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. We hope this video was a blessing to your life. Remember, the greatest debate ever was Satan versus Jesus, but Jesus overcame him very easily. Why? Amen. Because he's the one that justifies us. We're not justified by our own strength and our own holiness. We're justified by what Jesus did for us on the cross. So do me a favor. If this video was a blessing to you, press that like button. The more people that press the like button, the more people this video reaches. Also, leave a comment. Let us know how God spoke to you in this video. And if you're not subscribed, do me a great favor. This is a growing channel, and it would really bless my life if you would subscribe. So we'll see you next time, God willing. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I know they'll bless your life. Have a blessed day. Thank you.